Well, I know enough that it hasn't been affordable for us to do, even with the tax incentives that are in place. What's the date today? The 25th. I knew that. <laughs> so y'all looked at it. How, what have y'all looked at implementing? Well, the first solar application that we came up with was when we built a swimming pool. Mm-hmm. And we had some energy issues. We have western exposure on our house. We needed some shade over that. We were looking at awnings or changing out tinning glass. And we tried the tinning glass, and it didn't reduce the glare. And so we said, you know, we'll just put the pool instead of the original plan. We'll put it here, and we'll build this shade out there. So we... We got a long stick, walk out there, wait to see how far the shade's going to fall at different times of the day, and it ended up with a building that probably projects out 30, 40 feet outside of our house. So when it got to be that big, it's like, holy moly, okay, what else can we utilize this for? So we designed it with a flat roof in the middle, and we put solar panels up there that aren't your typical collector in a battery, but these just um, have water channels in them and so the plan was to heat the pool we ran water lines to pump the water up to the rooftop it runs it through these um, water channels in these huge plastic um, panels that were probably four foot by 12 foot long Mm -hmm. and we ran them in series plumbed it all together so you'd pump the water up it would go through all these little channels the plastic was black it absorbed lots of heat when it gets to the other end it comes out hot well we got every step done but the pump installed and then we had a tornado (laughs) and the solar panels ended up all over the backyard and in the hay field and down to the pond and we never reinvested and Wow. Yes. So we took all the money we got from insurance and upgraded the roof instead of putting solar panels. Okay. So that was our only, that we we moved ahead with plans and fully implemented it. The rest of it, you know, we've we've looked at several options, Mm -hmm. but it just hasn't become viable. And the looks of it and... We'd be okay doing a rooftop installation because when we upgraded our roof from asphalt shingles to metal, it's a lifetime guaranteed metal roof. Mm -hmm. So if we did an install Mm -hmm. on that part of the roof, it probably would negate the warranty on the roof. That's probably true. So then if we had wind problems or any kind of issues, so... It's, it's like you offset it and you think, okay, I'll save money here, but then you do have storm damage and it's not covered. And your storm damage, your tornadoes are real where we live. Uh-huh. It's a very real concern in this area of the country, so. Okay. So, so y'all, you own your house, right? Mm-hmm. And then it's a, it's a single family home, a detached home. Okay. How long have y'all lived there? We moved in in 1991. I'm pregnant with Jade. 27 years? Yeah. <laughs> yep. So, is your house? So, y'all live on a farm, though, right? Mm-hmm. We do. Okay. We, we dismantled an old antebellum home that was in Albany, Georgia, on Pine Avenue and rebuilt it on the farm. So, okay. we were under construction a long time. <laughs> so we did, you know, we were our own general contractor. So, I mean, we're looking for any means to, you know, to, to have it, you know, money saving because we planned on it forever. And mm-hmm. so we solar at that time, it really, it was in its infancy yeah. here in America for sure. For sure. What made y'all move to Cordial? Do you, My husband. Are y'all in Cordial? Here. Well, we're not You're, within this. We're within Crisp County. You're in Crisp County. Okay. Yeah, our, we have property in Cordial, but our farm is just outside of Sandy Lake. Okay. So y'all are, y'all are mm-hmm. in Crisp County, though? Yes. So your husband's from here? Yes. Where did y'all move back? Where did y'all move from? Atlanta. Atlanta. Um, let's see. Marietta at the time we moved. Yeah. Okay. 
Sorry, that's a little off. No, that's okay. Just <laughs> curious. Uh, uh-huh. So, your home. What kind of home are y'all in? You... It was yeah, originally building. constructed. It's a Greek Revival home that was originally built in 1905. Wow, that's cool. It's been a, it was the childhood home of Edward Vason Jones. If you know anything about architecture, you might recognize mm. his name. If you don't, it would mean nothing to you. I knew nothing about it when I found out who. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool, though. Yeah. After it was all her own. He was the the last big renovation they did at the White House. The White House is Greek Revival okay. architecture. A lot okay. of the buildings in D.C. that have that look. Uh-huh. You know, that look like they would have been in Greece, you know, a thousand years That's ago. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> so what made y'all, did y'all just buy the house and move it? or? To- yeah. We had to dismantle it to move it. The original plan was to take cut it in pieces and move it and when we got farther into it. We started on it. I was 28 years old. We really didn't know everything we were getting into. <laughs> it was one of those learn-as-you-go type of situations. It's like, oh, shit, what have we done? <laughs> we're too far into it to stop now, so we've got to finish it. Oh, That does sound like a oh yeah, big task. Oh, it was just <clears throat> a little crazy. I fell in love. My dad got a transfer to Georgia. I was from the Midwest, and he got a transfer to Georgia when I was just a kid, and they dumped me at grandparents to come down and shop for a house in Atlanta, and my grandparents took me to see Gone with the Wind. I thought that's where I was moving. <laughs> <laughs> Not the suburbs of Atlanta. Okay. Yeah, but I don't know. I just fell in love with that architecture at that point in time, and the rest is history. Sounds cool. Mm-hmm. That does not. I mean, the offices in nineteen. No, it's it was originally eighteen ninety five Victorian. Okay. For the offices. So. Okay. We cool. did that and our house at the same time. So yeah, that's a big job to do them at. But and then hey, we well, the gas station that had been vacant down at the corner that's now BJ's Diner Number uh-huh, Two. Uh huh. Then we bought that one, and then yeah, we did way too many things all at one time. Lost our yeah. butts on some of them. That, but. That, that's a lot. To <laughs> that's mm-hmm. a lot. Yeah. So, y'all installed your solar, but never implemented Never implemented it. it. But we did, you know. Because the tornado took it out. Because the tornado just. And then it was that, okay, are we going to have to. It, what what means if the, our plan for what would hold it on to the roof, how are we going to attach those panels to the roof without making more roof penetrations? Mm-hmm. So then we got into the same problem again because it's like, okay, if we start putting down more clamps and screws and things to hold this down so that the next wind wouldn't carry it off. Now, we didn't know enough to know if the weight of the water would be enough to keep it in place with the way we had it plumbed in. Mm-hmm. Nobody really knew what they were doing, you know, mm-hmm. so we were doing our own research and then hiring our own help to get up there. And, uh, so how long ago was that? Oh, Lord, girl. Um, <laughs> eight, I might have to ask Jade when she remembers when we built the pool. I'm thinking she was about seven or eight, so that would put it 20 years ago. 20 years ago. Uh-huh. So, versus now, it would be a difference of what it probably now, looks Yeah, I like. see. Look, solar's become more the buzzword. I mean, you know, the global warming and the people becoming more green-friendly and all that. So, it'd be totally different. Oh, so, the torna- so, a tornado took it out. So, yes, it then did. Said, and hey, then just... We went through three trampolines in my family, and on the th- we lost a trampoline. Four- on the fourth one, my dad says, "No more trampolines." They were all taken by tornadoes. Every one of them. Oh my gosh! We so we we out. can understand uh-huh. that tornadoes just make you go. Yeah, no, we had the coolest thing, and we had problems. The kids had sort of outgrown it, but you you remember when 
Oh, God, the trampoline place over here. I think it was Max. It would make the bungee jumpers. Mm-hmm. That would go, well, they'd gotten that for Christmas, and so it was the cool But So that had been on it, for, but they they weren't using it a whole lot. But, God, the tornado just mangled it. I mean, it was just mangled. It mangles trampolines quickly. Mm-hmm. So how did y'all decide that rooftop was something y'all wanted to try with the heat in the pool? Because you wouldn't see it. It's be out of sight. There's a parapet wall around that section of the roof, so you literally wouldn't see it at all. So it wouldn't be an eyesore. Okay. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So what heats your pool now? Just what the sun does from the top. <laughs> We've got gas heaters. We've never turned them on. I hear my friends talk about nightmare stories about what it cost them. It's like I spent $200 on a weekend to heat my pool. Okay. And they have a smaller pool than I did. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to turn those on. You know, <laughs> what would it cost? It's like, it'd be nice to have it heated. So I just wait till it gets warm enough to swim. <laughs> Come on, son. That's almost, you You get enough out of that being in Georgia. Well, you do. You do. It's a little chilly in the spring. But, you know, I gradually yeah, <laughs> start with my toes and work my way up. <laughs> So, if it didn't damage your roof and it wasn't an eyesore, would y'all look at doing it again? Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. Except for maintenance. Maintenance. Because, think about it. You know, who's going to climb up on a two-story roof to with soap and water and buckets and squeegees to wash the panels for conventional collection panels that have to be washed every year? So somebody's got to climb up on that roof, and it's dangerous, and the majority of homeowners, I mean, the trend now is to go towards rental, not toward home ownership, because the trend has been to move away. People don't do their own home maintenance. Mm-hmm. I mean, my friends all think I'm a weirdo, because I know how to operate tools and fix stuff, and, you know, they look like I have two heads or something. It's like... Yeah, we've always had to fix our own stuff for the most part. But I think the cost of maintaining it, what you might save in your power bill, if you have to hire it done, you're going to spend that money. And you have to hire crazy people to do that kind of work. Like, I have to hire have crazy people that climb up on billboard signs to hang our advertising. Mm-hmm. I mean, those people are a little loopy. <laughs> Yeah. They'd have to be. Well, and if it's not something around here much, your costs would yeah, be Yeah, that you've got to bring in a crew from somewhere else until we have enough here. Mm-hmm. And it's hard enough to get people to come out and do pool maintenance, let alone have them get them to come out and climb up on a roof. And, and the other factor is, okay... Asphalt shingle roofs, which are the traditional, most common form of roofing used on most homes in this area, have to be re-roofed. You're going to get maybe 20 years out of shingles. I mean, you think about how much heat load, and that's maybe if you use light-colored, white, or off-white shingles. The darker shingles, the more heat they absorb. They wear out sooner. They, and so you've got to take all the solar panels off. And then all the roof shingles off, and then recoat the, and and then reinstall. So you've got that installation charge again, mm-hmm. unless you have some kind of a permanent roof. Well, there's not really many roofs. The the kind of roofs that you see people do at a tar roof. Mm-hmm. Do you know how often they have to retar that? If you get five years out of it, you're lucky. So if you have roof stuff, yeah. So that's why people are going, okay, well, we'll do those, you know, a monopole. Well, then you've got to cut the grass under it or spray and kill everything under it. And you see the solar fields that are, like, out in the, you know, think about the only solar installation you've seen in our community is on government housing. Government's pockets are a lot deeper. They don't care if they have to pay to have it taken off and put back on. Yeah. So, do y'all use any of it on your billboards? Um, we have.
haven't transitioned. All of our signage already had electricity run to it, but if I were to do a new install, if I were to build a new billboard sign, I'd probably use it. It's provided I was in a place where I would get enough sun. Enough sun. Um, our, yeah, for new installations, I do that. At some, you know, we we may at some point change over to solar, but again, it's sort of a cost thing. Is what it would cost to invest in it. You know, it's not like we can charge more for advertising because we upgraded to solar lights. All they care about is it's seen. It's lighted up. You know, we're trying to go to more. As we have to replace light fixtures, we're going to like LED and things like that that are more energy efficient. Okay. Hmm. Well, are y'all's billboards on 75? Well, we have in town in 75, and we go as far south as Ashburn, and we have some random ones in North Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> up interstate, the farthest is McDonough. Oh, we do have one up in Commerce on 85, and then we've got some in Alabama, and then some in Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> We're sort of scattered. Yeah, everywhere. Where are uh, your ones in Alabama? Birmingham area. Okay. Birmingham area. We used to have Dothan and Enterprise, but we sold that marketplace a lot. We were just too scared. <laughs> <laughs> and a radio station bought us out. Huh. So. Interesting. Huh? That's cool. Okay, we got two maps we're going to do. So, your first map is the across the um, U.S. Where you think more people in the U.S. have solar. So, what you're going to do is you can color in your map or circle your map of where you think more people in the U.S. have their solar, use solar energy. Texas, California, I don't know if they get enough sunshine up in these areas. Um, let's, I wouldn't be I'm trying to think if I saw any more in Chicago or... Indianapolis or Raleigh. I haven't been up in the Northeast lately, but I would assume they would have some up in this Northeast area. Yeah, I would hope that they'd have a long Virginia, Maryland, D.C. area. Chicago's pretty progressive. You might have some up around Atlanta area. Maybe some along the coastal areas here. Yes. I really don't know. It's I'm just venturing a guess. It's I googled one after my last one. It's pretty close. Oh, okay. Uh, well, <laughs> it's this has made it interesting of where solar actually is. It's kind of interesting. Okay, this one is where in Georgia you think there's more solar, more solar usage. You run into geographical problems the farther north you get obviously our most progressive areas are up in here so i'm sure they're experimenting around atlanta area but i don't think it would go too much and i just came back from north georgia and i don't remember seeing that coastal areas i guess just because it's progressive medical wise i'm thinking just coastal areas i imagine columbus has some Macon, maybe a little. And then on in, probably Warner Robins. Yeah, because they've got government installation. I'm not sure about down in Tifton. Athens, maybe. College there. Oh, where's Tift County? Hold on. That's Turner. Yeah, give me a cheat sheet. Valdosta might have it. Uh, more like Lowndes County, Valdosta. Yeah. You know, I'm thinking just sort of up the 75 corridor. You can see some. Just, just venturing a guess. And I know we've got a little bit in the middle. I haven't seen a lot. Okay. But again, that's guess. Obviously, that wasn't right. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't know. I don't, you didn't Google that answer? No, I didn't look at Georgia's specifically. Oh, okay. But Georgia's got some more than I realized it did. Um, so, people that you know, or what do you think people in the other states, why do you think they use would use it more than this area? Um, Californians and New Englanders don't always think in practical terms. Um, they have a little bit more idealistic in their political views and all that. They tend to be more green friendly and I don't know. I don't know if they're generating enough excess income that they it's affordable for them, but sometimes. Uh-huh. And then what about Georgia? What makes you think that Atlanta area has it more than Georgia Power? I mean, they've already got Chris County's going to have to come up with their own plan about buying back excess power so that people can stay on the grid rather than having to go off grid, which I think might still be our only. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what kind of arrangement they've made with the one selfie user that I'm mm-hmm. aware of. That'd be interesting to yeah. find out. Yeah, I mean, I. So. Woodvale Apartments? Wood, are those Woodvale in that area? No. Sure, just down from Third Street Baptist Church mm-hmm. and go to the ball field. Oh, the ones that are right across. About. I saw them the other day when I was looking, or when I was driving them somewhere. I was like, huh, oh, they have solar panels. Yeah. But yeah, that's the only installation I've seen. I don't know. Yeah, I will say this: that we'll probably, if they're not already seeing it, a lot of farmers are transitioning to. Um, watering irrigation systems Mm -hmm. as that's becoming you can't get your financing for farming without having irrigation in place because you can't get crop insurance so you're sort of held over so most of them are putting in irrigation systems if it's not a power so you know you have to have a well and so you've got to power that and we'll probably see some solar installations there because a lot of the outlying areas it's not viable to run overhead lines then overhead power lines are in the way for farming and the cost of running it underground Mm -hmm. is prohibitive and so yeah i think we'll start seeing as we have agricultural applications change some that maybe but we don't have any big manufacturing businesses here um per se you know i don't know the big text you know, trailer company could benefit from solar. I don't really know what their power consumption is. Mm-hmm. The power company's not going to go to these big users of power and say, hey, how about <laughs> going on solar? That's like that's taking money out of their pocket. Mm. And yeah. the only other, you know, schools, you know, unless there's, they can sell that idea to schools. You know, that's one way the government could help is doing grant and funding for schools to get on solar and do our school buildings. Because, again, it's government pockets. Mm-hmm. So everybody benefits. I went to a friend of mine. He's retired now. But his last principal job was in St. John's in, um, like between St. Augustine, Jacksonville area, and he got the job of being principal of one of the first two schools in the nation to go paperless. And so we went to, the whole school was green friendly. Their cooling system is, they, they have like this swamp cooler thing and they manufacture ice and then they bring all the air and they blow it over the ice and then it chills, the, you know, chills. The, so they've got all this energy efficient means of, heating and cooling the school there's no paper everything's whiteboards every kid has an ipad hmm. it was <laughs> it's like dang this is a little step above what you expect to see in an elementary school that's in an elementary school yeah elementary school and they had all that it was pretty i guess it'd be a kid that would but they erected you know they constructed it from the ground up, it wasn't retrofitting an existing building. Mm-hmm. And, you know, 
if you go into and you engineer the plans from the get-go, it's a whole lot easier than... Like, well, that'd be the same with when you yeah. built your pool house. It was easier to start it than yeah. coming back and putting something on it. Uh-huh. So, that makes sense. Huh, that's interesting. That's really interesting. Well, do you have anything else you want to add in there? No. Share with us what knowledge you get. Mm-hmm. Uh, come to a program for Community League on <laughs> or get some of the big mucky muck to come down.